Hello everyone and welcome to my channel Learnings with Payal. In previous video we have learned that how various departments are involved in the entire business process. So on that point only I am going to take the next uh, topic of today's video that is nothing but centralized and decentralized system. So before I start centralized and decentralized system let me just recollect the uh, information which I have shared for um, various departments that are involved in the entire business process. So basically customer contacts sales department to check um, the products availability. Sales department contacts inventory department to check if the product is available or not. If in case that product is not available then sales department contacts production and planning department to manufacture that product. For manufacturing of that product, production and planning department again contact back to inventory department to check if the raw material is available or not. If raw material is not available, then production and planning department contacts their vendors and they purchase that raw material from vendors. Once they will receive the raw material from vendor, they will forward that material, raw material to shop floor execution department. Shop floor execution department will manufacture that product and once the product is ready, they will forward that uh, ready product to sales department. And after that, sales department will eventually deliver that product to customer. But meanwhile, when shop floor execution department will forward that material to sales department, sales department will, uh, department will also contact finance team and will update them regarding the revenue which is generated by the selling of that product. And similarly production and planning department will also update the finance team regarding the uh, payments to be made to vendors since they have bought the uh, raw materials from vendors. And during this entire process if any department is facing any HR or human resources related issue then they will contact HR department. So this is how different departments are involved in the entire business process. Now we will see how centralized and decentralized system comes into the picture and uh, what are the advantages and disadvantages of centralized and decentralized systems. So we will first go with decentralized system. So as per decentralized system, this is the only diagram which I can I can show you. This is nothing but decentralized system. So basically, in decentralized system, the data will be uh, will be stored locally. Like sales department will have their own data stored for themselves. Inventory department will will have their own data locally stored for themselves. And sim similarly, it will it will be with other departments as well. So if in case we have the decentralized system wherein data is stored locally with each department then it will be very difficult to check with the availability of product and the other informations as well regarding the products. For example, let us take the current scenario which we have discussed. When customer will contact sales department to check the availability of product, sales department will have to contact inventory department to check if that product is really available or not. And for checking that, since sales department does not have any real time data with, uh, with them themselves, it will take some time to check with inventory department regarding the availability of that product. And it might take some more time wherein customer will eventually uh, will be dissatisfied and will check for the other vendors and it will eventually lead to the customer's dissatisfaction and um, loss in the business as well. So that was the point which I have mentioned that is this decentralized system will eventually lead us to customer dissatisfaction and loss of revenue. So disadvantages of decentralized system would be in a distributed system the production planning and inventory department separately stores the information of raw material. This raises the data maintenance cost. So since even inventory department and production and planning department are storing the data separately for raw material and that's why that storage will take more um, cost will require more cost and it will be eventually lead to the data maintenance cost. 
The second point would be when sales team check the availability of the raw material for a particular product. As the inventory department is confirmed the, uh, the availability of product but at the same time as per the data of production and planning team, it shows the product is unavailable. The organization purchased the raw material but this increased the material and inventory cost. What does this mean? So basically as we have discussed that when a uh, production and planning department or sales department will contact inventory department to check the availability of product and let's say product is available but unfortunately if production and planning department since they don't have any real time information with them if their database shows that particular raw material is not available they might contact vendor and they will purchase the raw material from them which will eventually lead to the unwanted uh, purchase of that raw material and it will increase the material and inventory cost. If the raw material is available but there is a shortage of worker then shop floor team connects with HR department who recruits the momentary workers higher than market rates. Rates. This increases the cost of labors. So this is how it will eventually lead to the increase in cost of labors as well. At the same time, production planning section fails to inform the finance team regarding the material purchasing. Therefore, finance department delays the payment decided by the vendors. This affects the company's reputation and also invites portable legal action. So, meanwhile, during this process, if in case production and planning, production and planning department fails to inform finance team regarding the payments to be made to vendors, it will eventually lead to the dissatisfaction of the vendors as well. And eventually it will be, uh, it will affect the company's reputation as well and it will also invite the portable legal actions if payments are not made on time to vendors. So these are the disadvantages of decentralized system. So because of these all disadvantages, eventually we have got the um, ERP system and the centralized system wherein data is stored centrally. As you can see from this diagram, data is stored centrally uh, like in uh, at central position that is nothing but ERP wherein each department is able to access the information on central platform and they are able to see the information on real time uh, real time basis and for other departments as well so let us take the current scenario again which we have discussed when the customer is following up with sales department to check the availability of product and if uh, sales department will have to contact the inventory department to check if product is really available or not that time they will have the real time information with them like which is stored in central position and that that's why when customer will contact sales department sales department will be able to directly check the uh, check whether product is available or not in the central system and they will get the real time information where uh, if the product is available or not and accordingly they can inform the customer as well it will eventually lead the customer satisfaction and there will be no um, time consume uh, time consumptions uh, consumption as well so they will get the real time data in the central system centralized system and they will inform the customer so this is how if any uh, department will have to communicate with each other regarding the status of the product, regarding HR issues, regarding finance or revenue to be updated to finance team and kind of other things as well. They can directly check in their centralized system and they can get the uh, real time information at that moment only. So now what are the advantages of centralized system? SAP ERP software is a centralized enterprise management system. So this is what we know already. This is the centralized system removes the duplication gaps and redundancy in data. 
it provides the information across all the departments in real time so as we discussed each and every department will get the real time data since the data is stored in centrally and that's why it will be less time consuming they will get the immediate data uh, with them sap erp system provides control on different business processes the centralized system enhances enhances productivity provides better inventory management endorses quality decreases raw material cost effective hr management and reduces expenses and enhances profits with a centralized system the organization can get better customer communication and thus improves throughput it also helps to enhance the customer service as well so these are all the advantages which are uh, uh, related to centralized system and because of all these reason and because of all these disadvantages of centralized system now uh, these days uh, business are using the centralized system only and that's the only reason behind using sap and erp systems so now you i i really hope that you all are clear why sap and erp is very much important when it comes to huge organizations and businesses and that's why we have uh, um, uh, i mean sap is one of the good sector to work in because these days requirement for sap is um, you know it's it's at at a good level so yeah from next topics we will start covering the uh, main sap technical knowledges and basic things so like we'll start from how we can create users in sap systems and accordingly we'll go step by step so this was the basic information i have given uh, to you regarding sap erp uh, systems its decentralized system and centralized system their differences and the advantages and disadvantages as well and how the uh, business works entire business process how it goes so these are all things we have covered in the first three videos and now we'll we'll uh, we'll start working on uh, the actual or uh, technical things now so yeah that's it for today's video i hope you have understood if you have any queries you can just comment those queries in the comment box i will definitely try to resolve it thank you so much have a nice day